instructions for number one. Jacob. Label each number line with the fraction shown on the tape diagram. Circle the fraction that labels the three on the number line and also makes the selected part of the tape diagram. All right, great. So let's look at A here. What is this? What is the fraction that we have here? Do we have fifths? Do we have sixths? Do we have eighths? What do we have? Tanner? Fourths. How did you get that? There's four parts, right? Yeah, and this, this shows one whole. So what would this part be right here? Zero fourths. Zero fourths. He's done it right where we start. Uh-oh, but there's no little dash right here. Can we make one? Yes. Yeah, we can make one. What would that be? One fourth. And then in the middle? Two fourths. And then what do I need to do? Make a dash, and that is three fourths. And at the very end here? All right, are we done? Yes. What does the direction say we need to do next? Someone please raise their hand for me. 7G? shaded piece, right? What does the shaded piece represent? Which one of these fractions does the shaded piece represent? Zachary? One fourth. You got it. One fourth. All right. Not so bad so far, right? All right. B, what are we looking at there? Fourths, fifths, six, sevenths, what do we think? L? Eights. Do you guys agree? Yeah. All right, go ahead and label your eights. You're going to have to draw some of your lines then. Just follow their lines. Are we done? No. Tyler, what do you think? All right, and what fraction are we looking at? The sh what shaded fraction here? Who can help Tyler out? Who can Tyler? Do you want to tell us? Go. Two eights. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. Me too. All right. Scooch down the bottom. Looks like there's a lot of pieces in this one. Someone raise your hand and let me know what we're working with. Noah? Um, let's count them here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What did you say? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. My book says 12, so I don't know why. All right, so let's start with 0, 16. All right, this is going to take a while for us to write these in. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got it. Do you guys get it? Yeah. All right, so what are we looking at? What fraction here? David, what do you think? Um, check your shaded fraction one more time. Three sixteenths. Yep, three of the sixteen are shaded in. You got it. All right, number 
two, write number sentences using multiplication to show A, the fraction represented in 1A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 1B. Oh, do you guys see what we have to do there? So how is 1A equivalent to 1B? We have to use multiplication to show us. Abby, what do you think? One fourth is equal to what? Two eighths. And how do we get to two eighths? So I'll put two eighths down here. What happens from here to here? Oh, I'm sorry. So I, have, well, I start with one fourth, and you said that that equals two eighths. I agree, but how can I prove that right in the middle here? Yeah, we're just going to multiply it times 2. I'm going to times the top by 2 and the bottom times 2. And that gives us 2 eighths. And this is where it gets tricky because you'll see here in a second, I can tell you. B, the fraction represented in 1A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 1C. Devin? Um, multiply it by 4. Alright, so 1 fourth equals 1 fourth times 4 and times 4, and that should give us what? 3 sixteenths? Yeah. But what does it really give us? 4 sixteenths. 4 sixteenths. Four sixteenths. Four sixteenths. So is, frac is A and C, are they equivalent to each other? No. They aren't. In my book, they are. In my book, they made these into twelfths, and they said three twelfths and one fourth are equivalent. Let's check that. One fourth to what did they say? Three twelfths. Can we prove that those are equivalent? What would we multiply by? So one fourth times three. They give us three twelfths. So my book had it the right way, but yours didn't. So. We did it both ways. All right, go ahead and flip it over. All right, please keep your voices off for me so we can keep on scooching through this. Use each shaded tape diagram below as a ruler to draw a number line. Mark each number line with the unit fractions shown on the tape diagram. And circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line that also names the selected part of the tape diagram. So same idea as what we were doing earlier, but this time we were just drawing the number line. Got it? Got it. All right, so below here, just go ahead and draw your number line. I'm just going to follow their dashes, so wherever it, where it ends and where they have marks, I'm just going to mark mine. Got it? Yeah. All right, so what do we have here? Do we have halves? Do we have thirds? Do we have fourths? What do we got? Josiah? Two-thirds. Yep, we have two-thirds all together. So each section is a third. So we start with zero, one, two, three. All right, and Josiah says that we have two-thirds. Do you guys agree? Yeah. So I should... What do I have to do to show that? Circle. Yeah, let me circle it. All right, go ahead and do B and C on your own. I will be doing it up here if you get stuck.
When you're done, check your answers with nine, and then put your head down. Did you, are we twins? Do we match here? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Four, write number sentence using division to show. So what are we doing? Multiplication or division? Division. Division. I'm going to underline that so I remember. The fraction represented in 3A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 3B. So which one should I start with for this? 3A or 3B? 3B. 3B, because our numbers are bigger in that fraction. So we have 4, 6, and we need to prove that it is equal to 2 thirds. So we need to figure out what happens in the middle to show that these two are equal. And we have to use what? Division. Division. Who knows what I can put in the middle here? Austin? Um, 4, 6 divided by 2. You got it. 4, 6 divided by 2. What's happened to them bottom? Which gives us two thirds. All right, what about B? The fraction represented in 3A, which is two thirds, is equivalent to the fraction represented in 3C, which is eight twelfths. Which one will I start with? Eight twelfths. So I like to put my eight twelfths on the end and my ending fraction, which is two thirds, on the other end. What happens from here to here? How can I prove that those two are equal? Al? Um, um, 8 twelfths divided by 4. Yeah? So 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Does that prove it? Yeah. It sure does. All right. 5. Partition a number line from 0 to 1 into fifths. Decompose two fifths into four equal lengths. All right, so go ahead and draw your number line. And how many equal parts do we need? I'll just get, how, what are we putting this into? Are we making it into fourths, fifths? Fifths, yep. There's not a lot of room, so just try your best. All right, and then what are we supposed to do with the uh, um, two-fifths? I'm going to draw my two-fifths on there if I can. Compose two-fifths into what? Brendan? Four equal lengths. Four equal parts. So do I give each of these pieces four equal parts? No. No, I have to share the four equal parts between each of the fifths. So I'm going to draw my dashed line here and my other dashed line here. Now, from the beginning to two-fifths, do I have four equal parts? Yes or no? Yes. Yep, I do. All right, B, write a number sentence using multiplication to show what fraction represented on the number line is equivalent to two-fifths. So we want to know what B is equal. So we have two-fifths that we're starting with. What do we do, what do, we do to those two-fifths? Let's use multiplication. Um, Brendan? Multiply it by two. Multiply it by two, because we broke each section off into two parts. So that would give us four tenths. Is there, are there four pieces right here? Yeah. yeah. So 
So if we were to break all those, the rest of them up, we would have four tenths. All right, C, write a number sentence using division to show what fraction represented on the number line is equivalent to two fifths. So we're kind of doing this one backwards. We want to show how four tenths is equal to two fifths using division. So how would I start that one off? Tyler? Whoa, awesome. Do you guys agree with that? Yes. Great. 